gosh, I'm so happy to be here. I can't even tell you. Me too. Um, okay, you guys. So this is Jen Rubinetti. You are a wellness concierge. Yeah, is that I, like... I made that up. No, I like it though. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yes, I think so too. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And you do like sound meditation. You're a Reiki master. Practitioner. I am a Reiki master. I don't know if that's real title that anybody can I think it's qualify real. themselves to say they are, but I, like I it. use it. Um, I took the courses all the way through to the master level, so technically okay. yes. Okay. But I always feel like I'm still learning in that capacity. I love that. Here, here's how it all started. Um, COVID. Yes. Like everybody else, right? Well, and wait really fast. You are, by day, a modeling agent at Elite, which is literally one of, for those of you who don't know, one of the biggest modeling agencies in New York. If yeah. not, like, the biggest, coolest. It's, it's one of the first two, so Elite and Ford were the two founding agencies of, like, model agencies in the world. Yeah. Um, and yes, and Elite, it's not my first agency, but I have been there for four years now. Yeah. And I've been a model agent since 2020. Will you ever model? No, because you grew up. Yeah, I'm like, you're no. so gorgeous. I'm like, is that how we started? No, I wish. No, um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for models, and yeah. I, uh, you know, obviously I represent models and I work with models, but I have never been one, so I can't yeah. credit myself for knowing what that side of it is like completely. But yeah, I'm a very seasoned model agent. That's crazy. But okay. because I'm a seasoned model agent, yeah. and because the fashion industry more or less shut down during um, COVID, yeah, there was some work. Um, but I needed to find something to do with myself. And I was also kind of like feeling not disenchanted with fashion, but like a little bit like I had sort of experienced the bulk of what I wanted to in my career. And I'd gotten to like a really top level as an agent and I needed more. I think like most people just want to sort of keep, at least I want to keep growing. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of thought number one, but thought number two was my husband was the 53rd person in New York to get COVID in New York City. Wait, you actually know the number? Yeah, there's a big story there, but like to put it all in a very neat little nutshell, um, he got COVID pretty badly. Oh my God. Um, we quarantined, we were the first family to quarantine. We pulled our kids out of school the second he showed a symptom, then he got tested. It took eight days for us to even know that must clearly. have been so terrifying, terrifying at that point in time because yeah. no one knew and what any of it was. They wouldn't take him in any hospitals and he was really like struggling and he was having trouble breathing and it was it was pretty scary. So, and we have, we're, he's from a family of doctors, so we have all kinds of medical equipment in our house. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, he was very ill. I was in charge of him, the kids, and myself and keeping us alive. We had no supplies. And I went to this like, sort of, I went through this sort of like deep dive into like, how am I going to keep it together? Yeah. And keep myself centered and keep everybody alive and deal with all of this and the pitchforks and, you know, torches that were outside my home because they thought we were like, you know, no, ground no, zero no. COVID, which we obviously were not. No, but. of course not. So we, I did that. I had been working with a healer um, for a couple of years already. She was an Ayurvedic healer and she gave me a lot of tools, mostly centered around meditation. Okay. Um, that helped me in that capacity. Yeah. And so I really took a deep dive into my meditative practices. I had done other studies in meditation, like the Silva method and other types, but I needed to really like just find my center. Um, yeah. So that's where that began. And then the industry shut down. So I was like, well, I need to keep busy because I'm a doer. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I got into Reiki. That's when I started. Okay. My, my healer was a Reiki practitioner as well. So I wanted to learn. So I took all these courses online in Reiki. Can you tell people, and myself included, who don't know exactly what, what Reiki is? <laughs> like it, I, I know it, but I don't know Reiki. it. So let's break it down. <laughs> Reiki is a... Uh, to put it in the simplest of terms, Reiki is a Japanese style energy healing method. Okay. Okay. So really what you're doing is you're focusing on the chakra system and you're focusing on, with Reiki specifically, they give you specific, um, I don't want to call them, they're not chants, but they're specific words that you say before you go into a meditative Reiki state. And there are specific symbols that you use in terms of like when you're doing the sort of laying on of hands. Okay. And a Reiki practitioner is just a channel. So I'm not healing you if I'm putting my hands over you. Right. I'm channeling universal energy through my hands, and I'm focusing on the whatever your intention is for your body. And so the beauty of Reiki is, even if I don't know 100% what's wrong with you, Reiki energy goes where it needs to go. So it's sort of like, almost like being like a radio signal, right? Like uh -huh. where I'm sort of calling it in, and then yeah. I'm placing it over you. And so the, our collaborative energy is what helps. Now, people sometimes think, oh, that sounds like a bunch of crap. 
But I've used it on myself and I've used it on my kids. I used it on my husband during, during the recovery period of COVID and it's done wonders for all of us. I cleared my own back pain that I had for, I wanna say 13 years with Reiki practicing after every doctor and every practitioner and acupuncturist could not. Oh my God, I'm so fascinated. So, uh, yeah. So, so, so you can use it for like body things, you can like use it medical for physical things, things. You can use it for mental, mental things. Yeah. Like it's, mental blocks or something. It's a or... supplemental practice, right? So like if you're, God forbid, ever in a chemo clinic, right? Mm -hmm. And you are um, obviously dealing with the what happens to your body when it's fighting cancers, um, and then the chemo compounds that problem, right? You can use energy work, including sound therapy, which yeah. is what we're going to be doing today, so yeah. um, to reharmonize the body, mind, soul. Okay. Okay. So um, Reiki actually combined with sound work is a has tremendous impact on the cells. It's just tremendous impact on the cells on a scientific level because wow. your, your body is made of water, right? So you're in 90% water or something like that. Yeah. I don't know the exact number. Please don't quote me. Here's a perfect example. If you ever freeze water, right, mm -hmm. um, you can look at the fractals of of ice under the microscope and you can see that there is it like there's structure. a pattern sometimes yeah. there's structure now there was an experiment that was done um a scientist i think his name is dr emoto um he took three different glasses of water and he put one glass of water in a sunny place and he that was there for a week three identical glasses one was put into a laboratory and one was put under a shaded tree the one that was left in the laboratory was completely ignored for a week. The one that was put in the sunny spot was spoken to with kind words for a week. And the one that was left under the shade was spoken to with ugly, hateful words for a week. He then took those three glasses, put them in a freezer, and then examined all of the ice fractals for each glass oh afterwards. God. The one that was left in a laboratory looked like regular ice that you find in a cube tray. Yeah. The one that was left in the sun had beautiful, almost snowflake-like patterns. And the one that was left in a shaded spot that was spoken to in an ugly, negative way had like almost like a uh, fractured pattern, like it was, it was like a broken glass. Wait, I'm like actually getting emotional about that. That's it's like a real really thing. crazy. But think about it like in the same way that we it's speak to energy. plants. energy. Have yeah. you ever heard of like people talking to plants? No, I, I literally just kissed my plant this morning. And my, my, it's well, probably right. right. <laughs> Whenever like a new leaf comes, yes. I'm like, I kind of pet it. Like we're all feeling, you know. But we are. We're all yeah. connected. I mean, it's all. I mean, if you look at even like the system of mycelium that are. Yes. That, oh my God, I'm so fascinated. By that. I mean, yeah. we're all connected. So there's just a tremendous amount of proof out there yes. that energy work is real, and that just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? Just yeah. like love. Like yeah. you can't see love, but yeah. you know it exists because you can feel it. Oh my God, I'm so, like loving this. Yeah, so that's that's that was my inspiration for all of this. Okay. So fast forward to uh, Reiki certifications get done, and I'm using that. And then I started working on sound healing because I wanted to learn what it was all about. And that's where my fascination began. Um, and so I became certified as a sound, I shouldn't call it a sound therapist because I don't consider myself a therapist. But I guess a sound healing practitioner. Okay. Um, and so I started doing that, and I started it at home. And then I started doing it in small groups with friends. And then I started getting bigger and bigger, and people started hearing about it and requesting it. And now I have a couple of re residencies in New York City hotels, and I have this space that we're going to be um, yeah, this is doing so today. Cool. I'm excited for everyone to see this. Okay, so tell everyone where we are. I'll so show you in a second. We're in a space called The Green Boutique, which is part of the Brooklyn Dance Lessons Studio. And we're in Gowanus um, in Brooklyn. It feels really welcoming and warm here. And yeah. the couple that owns it, Olga and Alessandro, um, they teach dance lessons in their other space, which is connected to this one. And it's a great community space. And they're going to be offering a ton of really amazing wellness projects yeah. and wellness modalities we brought here in different ways. And I hope everybody who sees this video comes and sees yes, it. Yes, you have to come. Okay, so when we start the sound meditation, can we talk a little bit about that? Like what we can expect and yes. tell me, like if you, I'll show you, but there's like all of these glass bowls and they're different sizes. Right. Like I knew nothing. So I was like, have you ever been to one? No, I'm, I'm a You're literal, a newbie. yeah, I'm a sound, sound I was just going to say, I was like a sound meditation virgin. And I'm not going to do anything. I am so jazzed for here. it. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> Except to realign all of our we're molecules. We're realigning our chakras. Yeah. Um, actually, those particular bowls, I use crystal quartz bowls. Um, okay. there's some people use Tibetan bowls, which are the metal ones. Yeah. I, I prefer the crystal quartz. I think the sound is a little bit um, lighter. Okay. Uh, each bowl is corresponding with a different chakra. So our bodies vibrate in uh, different megahertz. The bowls are tuned to the 430 megahertz, which is they call the miracle sound. Okay. Um, that's a funny term, the miracle sound. But yeah. basically what it means is that, like, you know, this is looks solid. But right. technically it's just little atoms that are vibrating in there. Exactly. Right? Everything is. You yeah. are, I am, everything is. Yes. So the miracle sound basically is what they call the sound of the earth, the sound of the universe, right? So everything that's vibrating on the organic level is that. So these bowls are kind of tuned to that sound, oh, these particular wow. ones. Some of the other instruments are too. I have some koji chimes, which are just so magical and musical. And I have a ring stick and an ocean drum, and I have a gong, which sometimes can be a little bit. It can be a little bit jarring on the. Um, and it's different people react to it differently. So it can either be like a joyous feeling, or it can be like a really deep feeling where you're dredging up some yeah some tough stuff. But okay. I always say when you're in a sound meditation, no matter who the practitioner is, don't try to resist whatever's coming up. You should just kind of allow yeah. and feel and if it's feeling difficult breathe through it and um, we do that in, in my sound meditations I start with breath work okay and I teach you how to breathe through things so that if something does come up that's a bit difficult you have sort of a tool to use to help yourself through it while okay. that portion of the sound bath is happening um, I also do a guided meditation portion and in this one today we'll be doing a chakra alignment meditation and intention setting it's gonna be fun I love I'm intention setting like Oh, okay. That's so fun. How many chakras do we have and like how many bowls are there? Okay. There's a lot of bowls. There's really seven, there's seven, there are more than seven chakras. Okay. What I am, are, what I is a not, chakra for people who so don't So chakras know. are your energy centers, right? So okay. we have seven and in, in my, in my practice, we use the seven main chakras, which are the crown chakra, the third eye chakra, the third chakra, the heart chakra, solar plexus chakra, the sacral chakra, and then the root chakra. Okay. okay, those are and they're and where I was just pointing. Okay, yeah. so each chakra aligns with a different type, a different part of you. So your your crown chakra is your basically your opening to the universe, your opening to the spirit world. Okay, okay. your third eye chakra is your intuition. Okay. Your third chakra is your speaking, your power, your voice, your ability to speak for yourself and about things that are you're passionate about. Your heart chakra is exactly what you think it is. It's your love center. It's yeah. where everything that Matt, I get goosebumps. I know. I was that. just like, I'm getting tears in my eyes. It's like crazy. It's, 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 a, it's an incredible thing because they're really, they're really, they exist. This yeah. isn't just made up stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's tons of religions that all use these um, energy centers in ways that they're all, all a little bit different in the way that they exercise um, chakra alignments and, and how do we use our chakras. But for the purposes of this, we keep it pretty simple. Your heart chakra is your love center, and it's like where all your emotions are. Your solar plexus chakra, which a lot of people, especially in New York, struggle with, that is your confidence, right? That is your, um, that's your ability to stand up for yourself. That's your ability to stand up for what's right. That's your ability to like oh, yeah. show up for you. That's your ability to be your biggest you, the yeah. best version of you. Um, your sacral chakra, that's your passion center. It's right above, it's right below your belly button, right above your yeah. private situation. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's, it's my favorite chakra because yeah. a lot of people don't realize that they can be blocked there because sometimes if you have, like, if you're an artist and you can't figure out what to paint or if you're a writer and you can't figure out what to write, it's usually a sacral chakra blocking. Wow. Because that's, it, it, can, it can happen in a million different ways and we don't always know how, but there are ways that we can unblock those chakras to okay. get things flowing and moving again. Okay. And then your root chakra, that's your grounding chakra. That's what keeps you like firmly planted to the earth. It keeps you like steady on your feet. It keeps you moving in the world. It keeps you connected to the earth. Um, okay. So you have the two, the yeah. top and the bottom connects you to the higher self and connects you to the earth. And when we do our chakra meditations, I always like to keep, I like to open up every chakra, but I always root us. So I always ask my participants to imagine roots coming from their root chakra and burrowing down, and it doesn't matter if we're on the 24th floor, burrowing down all the way through um, the 17, 18 levels of concrete and yeah. then into the earth and just rooting. And that's what helps you stay connected to your physical plane, but also stay connected to the higher plane. So it's a whole energy flow between the divine and the real world that we live in. 
I love that. Yeah. So then when we're going to be in doing the sound meditation and you're doing that, mm -hmm. that's going to, I'll be like, guiding you. You'll be, do you'll be doing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that will just like loosen all of those up. And like, what does that do? It's going to, you'll feel it as we, as I, as I guide you through, you'll probably feel different things like sort of opening up in your body. Um, it's subtle, but if you're focused, you'll probably be able to feel some sensations. Um, most people do. And, um, I've, taken this into so many parts of my life including into my life in fashion yeah so like a lot of my clients my models will come to my events oh they must love it they're so you great you should do it for actors so awesome. i'm an actor and i'm like i I'll, need I'll you <laughs> like wants, i need you everyone's welcome and i know i actually my best friend is a manager and oh, he's really? an acting manager and, okay. and i know what he goes through with his yeah clients well, too and how hard their, their lives are because it's just well it's, it's like a messy complicated well, time there's right rejection yeah. and then oh, yeah. there's you know there's you're putting yourself out there in such a visceral way totally. i mean but in any capacity in your life you're doing that right like yeah. when you're trying to like get ahead in the world yeah and it's tough and you need sometimes just to find like something that'll balance you and that's what this 100%. is i'm also really interested because i was reading an interview where you talked about being kind of like a fixer like do you remember? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that something we could talk about? Really sure. Because I thought it was so interesting. Like, as your work as an agent, like at the beginning, you're like, I always felt like people were like, I was fixing all the problems, and like that was your purpose yes. was to like kind of help other people get where they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And through all of this, you kind of realized that not like you're fixing people, but you're the conduit to. Yes, and that's right. Like, tell you're, me, you're yeah. kind of right. Um, it's in my nature. To like fix things and like if yeah. someone has a problem i'm always like okay how can i like make this better for you yeah i don't like to see anybody uncomfortable but somewhere along the line it started becoming really draining to be the fixer for everyone because then you just sort of create that as your persona mm -hmm. and everyone expects that you're going to fix their problems if they yeah. tell you them so i was like but this isn't doing anyone any favors either right because the truth about fixing is that you're not giving that person the power to help themselves um, and I also was a, a recipient of that. Like I would often go to my husband and like say to him things like, oh, I can't, I can't reach that suitcase. I can't right. reach get that suitcase. Right. Well, what if he's not around? Am I just not going to get that suitcase? Like I need to be able to fix that problem for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And something that simple yes. made me realize like I'm doing a disservice to anyone yeah. that of course my job as an agent is to like promote models and to get them work and to, you know, be part of the industry. But I also want to give my clients the tools to like manage themselves in some some part of their the process, right? So yeah. like, if you get stuck at the airport, you should be able to manage that problem, right? Totally. If you get um, on a set and someone asks you to do something uncomfortable, you should be able to speak up for yourself, yes. right? If you're yeah. if you're in a situation at a casting where you know you don't feel comfortable with what they're asking you to do for that casting, you need to be able to learn how to say no, or you need to learn how to do something that's I guess different than what they're asking, but still providing what they're looking for, right? So like yeah. there are a, little, a lot of ways that you can use this like fixing. Yeah. But I think the goal for me was to figure out how I can help not just my clients, but people fix their own problems by making them feel empowered. Yeah. And so, you felt full fulfillment in doing this yourself. Well, how wonderful to be able yeah. to like teach someone that they have their own superpowers totally. and not just be the person doing it for them, right? Yeah, and it's yeah, even, yeah. I mean, if you're a parent, you know that, like teaching your kid yeah. how to do, how to tie their own shoes and not always tying their shoes for them yeah. makes that child feel like, oh, look at me, I'm empowered. I can yeah. do this. I don't need somebody else to do that for me. Yeah. So that was where the shift came. Uh-huh. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't still sometimes fix things. Of course. Because that's I feel job. like it's also, like, nature of, like, women in general. I feel like women do that a lot. Like, we take that burden do. on our, a it's lot. It's in our nature. I yeah, to take you. care of and fix and, like, sure. solve There's it. There's a biological component to it, right? Right. But it's also really satisfying to be like, that doesn't always have to be our job. Right. And we can use this work to kind of fulfill ourselves and help other people fulfill themselves Bingo. exactly you know what I mean? exactly yeah and, and also when, when we do that right like it's so lovely to stand back and see that you've taught someone how to do something for yeah. themselves and then like it helps them like realign their energy i can't suddenly they're <laughs> suddenly they have power like yeah. you've been a conduit for that yeah how, how, how gratifying for yes. both of you oh 100 percent. right so that's the goal that's the goal. So that's why this whole journey began. And also that's why then I became a life coach because I was like, you know, I'm doing all this energy work, but I, I know sometimes people like, especially even after a sound meditation, like I sometimes if there's time I'll do a sharing circle and I know that sometimes there's like an integrative process to, 
figure out how to like bring the things that come up in a sound meditation into your life and make sense of them oh, yeah. and move on from them. Yeah. So the life coaching thing kind of like took a, a course on that too. Um, that was a six month course, which was great, but there's a lot of hands on practicing stuff and mm -hmm. that actually has been really amazing and gratifying too. Well, that's really interesting because like I would imagine this does call up like a lot of emotions mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, great. Now what do I now do? Now what do I do? Yeah, like right. how, how do I fix things in my life now that I know that I have these that's, blockages? That's what coaching is. Coaching yeah. is about teaching you how to fix it yourself. How yeah. To, how to like create the life you want. So I teach these courses on Wednesday nights with my partner, Joanna Regendron. Okay. Um, and we re leave retreats too. We have one in Tuscany. Oh my gosh, I saw that and I was like, oh, do you Yeah, I'm excited. It's <laughs> in September. September. End of September. We, there's still some spots open if anyone yeah. wants to um, It's going to be in Tuscany. It's a six day retreat and it's going to be sort of like an eat, pray, love, but all in Italy. Um, and it's all about creating the life you want instead of reacting to the life you have. Yeah. Have you dealt with anyone in your life who has been not hesitant to accept it or been skeptical and been sure. like, I don't know, this is a little woo-woo. I keep hearing sure. people be like, oh, it's woo-woo. Woo. I... Sometimes I say it, I'm like, no, no we it's do. not too woo-woo right now. <laughs> I'm going to say this with like the most, the most genuine authenticity I can come up with. I am a Bronx-raised, Italian-Catholic-raised girl, yeah. okay? Yeah. I came from like a neighborhood where like, it was like good fellas all the time, okay? Stop. Okay. So... I have a New York edge mm -hmm. and I don't typically subscribe to the woo woo stuff uh -huh. and like all of the, I mean, listen, I'm wearing crystals and I have like all this stuff and I, and I love them and I think they're beautiful, but do yeah. I like put all of my eggs in that basket? No, yeah. I think the truth is there's a nice balance between using stuff like this mm -hmm. as like a, maybe like just sort of a, a totem or like something that you can like a touch piece. Yeah. Um, to keep your focus, um, but do I believe that this crystal is going to fix me? No, right. I just or think like that protect you. Or no, no. I yeah. think that it's all about what you ascribe to it, right? So sometimes I find that my hard New York edge is what makes me more accessible to people who are interested in yeah. this sort of work because yeah. I'm not sitting here preaching to you that you know the angels are coming down and they're going to fix you and it's gonna, yeah. it's and we're all beautiful and one like yes we are yeah but there's a really no, very I, realistic way that you can approach this and it doesn't have to make you feel like you're nuts. No, I love that. And yeah. I think you're right. I think that's why it works with you because it's like you do have that hard New York edge. Yeah. But you have like so much compassion and empathy. But yeah, it's not like you look at you and you're like, oh. She's going like, to throw it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I could tell that she you might have been here. skeptical of it at first and been like, oh, let's explore. Like, what's up? You know? I was. I, was. I, needed, to, I needed the proof for myself. I'm yeah. a skeptic about everything. I needed yeah. to be able to like practice it, try it, see if it worked, and it yeah. did. So, so why wouldn't you So why wouldn't I? Now I want to bring it to everybody that wants to have it in their lives. I love that. Yeah. And on that note, should we go do some fun with Yes, let's go do it. Oh, I can't wait. I love it. Thank you.